Melinda. Hello, Melinda. Welcome. Welcome to VCR Party. My name is Joe. This is Nick, and here we are. We're back. We're live. We're back, and uh, we got a big, huge show. It's Another jam-packed. jam-packed. We got to rush through this one again, too. Yeah. I feel like we're always rushing through our shows now. Well, we have a special guest today, um, Steve Young, former colleague at the uh, Late Show with David Letterman. He's here with some exciting stuff. He so also gonna... wrote one of my most favoritest Simpson episodes of all time. Too. Oh, good. Well, yep. we'll talk about that. Uh-huh. Uh, but first of all, we're watching VHS tapes from our collection, And uh, but what do we have up We've top? got 10 million of them in here in this office and we're trying to get through all of them with your help so today we're gonna we're gonna start with a found footage festival classic now this one doesn't actually have a VHS tape with it but it can be found on uh, volume 8 of our DVD and uh, so this one we just wrapped up volume 8 last week in Dallas yeah. so now I feel like we can start releasing our volume 8s into the into the air Yeah, that's now. true. So, yeah, so we've been touring vol- uh, Volume 8 of the Found Footage Festival show for about a year and a half, almost two years, right? Yep. And we just kind of, <laughs> we never really celebrate the fact that it's the last show. No. It's just kind of like... But this was a good one, too. Yeah. Like, this, like, this is going to be a memorable one because we are getting sued the entire time while we were doing yeah. this tour. So you did, and we did. We never signified, but you did dare me to do a crotch chop oh, yeah. in front of the live audience. Yeah. Who and I did, and no one knew what it was. Yeah. A- and your hands were full. I think you had like something in your hands. I had a so remote had control, to... and I did a crotch chop, and I was Stand like, "Stand up Thanks, and do a every... crotch no, chop." No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Will you do a crotch chop at the end of this? Sure. Show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stick around yeah. to the end, everybody. <laughs> Is that what they're called, crotch chops? That's what you called it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm using your own terminology against you. Uh, who invented that? I, I feel think like Vince it was. McMahon. It could be. The first time I saw it was in the uh, documentary League of Ordinary Gentlemen. That's right. Yep. The yep. bowler, I forget his name, but the PBA bowler would do that after a strike. All right. Let's uh, crotch chop. Let's get, let's get crotch chop in here. This first <laughs> video, this, this kicked off volume eight. Uh, it's the North Dakota news team. So we were doing a show in Fargo a few years back, and a guy came up to us, and he said that he had worked in local news for the last 20 years, and he hated the job but he loved the bloopers. He was an editor, he was a director, and he handed us this hard drive with 20 years worth of untouched news bloopers on it. Yeah. And it was like, it was pure gold. You watch them get worse over two decades. I just found the the hard drive over there. There's still more stuff we haven't even covered yet. It's incredible. There's just hours and hours of footage. So this is our edit of the North Dakota news team. Watching WDAY First News, your news leader. Gun safety advocates in the National Rifle Association squared off before Congress as lawmakers hear both sides of the gun control debate. Still to come tonight, a candidate for governor offers his solution to property tax relief in North Dakota. Another <laughs> store is about to open in downtown Fargo. <laughs> that guy me it's screwing up. that guy always. It's that guy's fault. Uh, the content of math or any subject for that matter <laughs> to the students now. A storm tracker seven day forecast. You can see we will see a few oh, scattered magic snow this showers again most amazing. on Saturday. And the temperature is definitely trending colder as we head How into the How did he do that? He leaves from that side. He like Davies walks through a portal. Tiffany right. Navigating one of the more complex sections of a return. This is the longest silence in television history right here. We're witnessing it's it. It's just kind of, this it went out live. Uh-huh. And we'll actually bring you that story after the next commercial break. What? They're always like fidgeting we'll with the button down. There's something underneath the one. desk. A man described as a serial killing in training is executed a in A serial killing in training. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Bless me, thank you. <laughs> sneezing Bless on me. Air. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than sneezing on air. Live tonight at six. <laughs> <laughs> we call this the booger desk here. Everybody yeah, it picks always their happens nose there at the exact same time. <laughs> it's always men too. I yeah, mean, this guy's this guy's just going for it too. He's he does a swipe and then oh, goes that, in. that one goes from the eye to the nose, and then watch. To the mouth. This donation yep. also provides the opportunity for there. scouts and other organizations <laughs> to get in touch with nature. Ouch! Ouch! You little biting flies! Your sons of okay. Ouch! You little bastard! Quit biting me! Fucking nature! <laughs> He's yelling at nature. 
I don't give a shit. I'm cold and I'm fucking freezing and I hate this. Well, Fargo will be getting a Chipotle soon, but it may be missing one thing. Ooh, and I'm counting down the days. I love these types of food. Here's Jane King with well your Bloomberg put. Business Report. <laughs> and these we types of food. I, it sounds like a shoe is in a dryer here. <laughs> a problem for residents like Phoebe Weeby. <laughs> Three, two, three, two, one. A problem for residents like me. Oh, God. Three, two, one. A problem for residents like Phoebe Weeby. She needs to dig her tree. Reporting live in North Fargo, Bill Shammer, WDAY, Six Notes. There it is. Well, That's what it is here. Phoebe Weeby. Oh. I like what she's doing. She can't even get through the countdown towards the end. She goes, three, two, one. I, I, lo I love how you get to see her open that enormous pillbox yeah. like oh, six yeah. times in a row. Yeah. She's like, Poor oh. Phoebe Weeby. So, okay, so some exciting. Uh, updates on Phoebe Weeby. We did a show in Minneapolis uh, about a month a, ago. Well, a month ago, but it was a it was a year and a half before that that this guy told it me. Oh yeah, that he knew Phoebe Weeby. That he and his wife were friends with Phoebe, in Weeby, Iowa, the actual right? Phoebe in, Weeby. Yeah. And the legend has it. He told us legend has it that Phoebe Weeby, it was her second marriage, and it was to this quiet farmer. And everybody was always like, why is she marrying this she guy? she had a good sense of humor. She was funny, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what he said. But then he said, our theory was that she only married him for his last name. So and that the names the case, were actually I mine. mean, you got to tip your hat. Oh, Phoebe Weeby. A legend. Yeah. A legend. Um, no oh. longer with us, but tonight's show is dedicated to Phoebe Weeby. Yep. <clears throat> um, and her husband, Wavy Gravy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was her husband's name. But. And her other husband, uh, Harry Carey. Right, and Ralph Malf. And Ralph and Malf. She had a long line of rhyming husbands. Hold on. Georgie Porgy. Georgie Porgy, no, of no. course. Uh, did you Hold want... on. No, that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have another Phoebe Weeby related oh, update. Yeah. Um, so we were doing a show in Ra Raleigh, North Carolina, and we played that video, and a dude came up to us who owned an, uh, uh, like, a sec like a vintage store, an online vintage store, and he said, I actually had the same shirt. I was selling the same <laughs> shirt right. that Phoebe Weeby was wearing. It so said I melon on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you no, pulled this. I forgot yeah, about yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, this so, guy was great. So, uh, <laughs> I was you know, like, I'm sure it's similar, but it's not the shirt. For, so, okay, so there's Phoebe Weeby's shirt, yeah. right? And then here's the dude's shirt. And, this and he's is, wearing it, And he's too, wearing right? it, too. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> melon, yep. summer. And then, look, I, I zoom in here so that you can see some details. There's the yeah, melon the melon, shirt. yeah. All right. Oh, there's looks like... And then, zoom in. This is the same exact shirt. That melon. is. That's yeah, the shirt. Yeah, kiwi over And, and it's, a, it's a full piece shirt, too. Like, <laughs> and and with a, an outfit. It comes with shorts, shorts too. Shorts, yeah, yeah, matching shorts. Um, so, yeah, look up that guy, uh, Elevated Weirdo Empire, I yes. think is his. And he has a great Instagram. And, oh, so speaking of that... Um, I'm friends with his fiance on Instagram. <laughs> yes, I'm really excited. About this. <laughs> I've been excited about this for two weeks now. So, so then she posted this video, uh, maybe a, about a week and a half ago. A, a to video, us. well, uh, yeah, huh? What's that? To us, right? No, or no, did no. She she, no, she just posted on her Instagram. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just so that people could see it, and I saw it, and I was, I just fell in love with the clip that she put on there. It was called Baby Rapper, and I was like. Can can we have that? We'll trade you. I just put together a care package for yeah. like a huge care package because the video is so incredible. I'll just show you. She's we got it in the mail today. It's baby rapper, and so it's a baby rapper that dances to Beatles songs. Right. It, there's a long way to go. I mean, there was the dancing baby from Ally McBeal. That's they use I, that same technology. I think that was the spinoff. It's it crude, says, crudely says, computer animated. Dance along, sing along to Beatles songs with baby rapper. So my question is, if he's a rapper, why is he singing Beatles songs? Well, Shouldn't he be do you, do doing you want to see like a little sneak MC? peek? You want to? I'm, I'm going to show more, a lot more next week. Yeah. I bet we just got it today, so okay. I'll just show you the opening. Sure. Yeah. Just we'll a take, real quick we'll take opener. a quick peek at Baby Rapper. And uh, you'll you'll note that there's absolutely no rapping in this at all. Um, was it just because from, from what I've seen so far? Because he has a backwards hat, so they were like, "Oh, let's call him a rapper." Yeah. Yeah. And why Beatles songs? This seems like the toughest things to license. Exactly. I don't know. And it's Brentwood, which like they shit out videos constantly. Here. Oh. Oh. 
That's all I'm going to give you. Oh, That's wow. all I'm going to give you. Well, next it's, week's come it's back somehow next even week. greater than I thought it'd be. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. And just wow. Get, oh, boy, this is just so much about Can that. I hold up this Christmas card? Because we're lucky enough people oh, send yeah. us stuff. And this is a great one we got from the funeral director who um, sent us, what was it, postcards from his funeral home? Yeah. He sent us a really nice warm Christmas card here with his cat here. Yeah. Well, the best part in it. Yeah, he it, well, says, he, yeah. He, this is America's favorite funeral director and his cat. It's is it Chris? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he says, I'll hopefully soon have some good news for you about the embalming video he's written us about. Yes. So he teased that a little yeah. while ago. It sounds like he has a good lead on the, on, embal on, on on the an embalming, embalming video. video. Yeah. So excited for that. Crossed there. Let's let's look forward to it. Yeah, embalming I know. videos, baby rapper next week. It's an eventful week. Oh, uh, so also while we were in was it Austin? Yeah. A dude came up to you. Yes. This is unbelievable. I, I, I put a little clip for reference if you want to set should, that up first. Set, um, well, he just came up to me. He was a younger, younger guy. And uh, he said, um, you, you remember the uh, You're in Good Health clip you played? We've shown that on the show here. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's the documentary. And we showed it at that show that yeah, day, too. It's a yeah. documentary about the health benefits of urine. Mm -hmm. And we played a clip from him. He goes, do you remember like the Irish nun who was in Guatemala and that? So do you want to hold that yeah, up? Now? Yeah, let's yeah. Watch, okay, let's so watch. Let's, let's watch the clip from uh, Urine Good Health. Of course I remember that. <laughs> I just did a little 10 oh, seconds. You just have there. heard. I go yeah. and pee well, no, and just, I uh, take a little glass and the first thing I do in the morning, I just drink it. It's recommended in taking the urine therapy that you only drink your own urine. You don't take anybody else's unless it's somebody very, very sick and then they would take the urine of a, a baby of their own sex. That lady, so it turns said, out. remember her? <laughs> That's his grandma and she's still alive. Uh -huh. And he had no idea that she was into urine therapy. <laughs> and he, did you get his name? Because we got to find out. No, but he. I said to email us, so okay. hopefully he will. He said he was going to show. Hopefully he's her. watching the show. He bought so. the DVD to show it to her. So. Oh really? He, yeah, he wants to show her. Oh, okay, that so he's on good. Like he could. Say, yeah. Oh, I didn't know you drank your own. Yeah, pee. yeah, and he had this story about how she got from Ireland to there, and I don't know, and then how he ended up in all Texas. All with her own urine. That's yeah, that's it. it. Yep, she owes it all to baby urine. Uh, <laughs> and baby rapper. Uh, do we have anything else up top before we get into our guest? Oh, uh, we do, yeah. Let's see, what else we got? We got the Melinda oh, update? Oh, we got the, the, the great Melinda update. Okay, so um, we're down in Dallas. That's where Melinda's from. And we made Melinda, some Melinda, of course, calls. from the Nick Nolte video uh, oh, yeah, in 48 yeah, yeah, yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we were down there, and we decided to call Melinda. We, we decided to try to find the office that Melinda was at, and there were two of them. So we went to this one first. This is the first one. And uh, Nick, we, we spent way too much time outside of this office. I'm about to walk in and say, well, hello, Melinda. And I don't know what else I do, but uh, uh, we want to try to track down Melinda, so I'm going to see what I can find out. Okay, ready? Go. I had no idea what I was going to say. It's locked. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, so it was locked. Yep. Okay. So, and strike also, it, one. it didn't look familiar because that's no. not the steps that Nick Nolte was walking up in the 48 exactly. hours clip. So then we went to the other office, the one, and we recognized this one, and you, you'll probably recognize it too. I'll, I'll play the clip from uh, the Nick Nolte 48 hours clip. <laughs> this is so kind of 48 hours followed Nolte, okay. who's now 60. Now, look, I paused there. That's where we parked. We parked right across the yes. street in that spot. We're in, across and the street from yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing to his doctor's clinic in Dallas. Well, hello, Melinda. To okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, so, Melinda. We were parked outside of that very office. Yep. And uh, and uh, Nick uh, gave them a call because we weren't about to go in. We had some it just kind of seems a little stalkery yeah. to like walk right in. Right outside the office of yeah. that. It's right here. Chris Renna. Yeah. This right is there. where Nick Nolte walked in and said, "Well, hello, Melinda." It feels very stalkery right now. I feel like we're being very suspicious. That's why we're not walking in. We're just calling like cowards from the outside in the car. <laughs> It'd be weird if we walked in and we're like, "Hi, are you Melinda? We saw you in the video." Yeah. If, I think it's easier to do. There's it. no way she's still working there. It's been 20 years. She might. Well, let's call and find out. Um, and is I'm somebody. Just, I heard a door open. No, it's not okay. them. All right, so I'm going to call and see. I was on uh, pins and needles. Yeah, yeah I, know. <laughs> I know. I'm going to explain this. Like, it'd be weird if we walked in, as if this isn't weird. Hi, this is Melinda. Uh, 
Hi, is this Dr. Renna's office? It is. Oh, hey. I called last week about trying to track down an old um, employee uh, named Melinda who worked there in 2000. Just wondering if, okay. yeah, just wondering if uh, anybody had an update on that. We uh, we'd seen um, your office in a, an old 48 Hours news piece about Nick Nolte, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, just wanted to, uh, <laughs> yeah, track down and ask some questions about that. Okay, um, I think the only person that would have information on that would be your office manager. Um, do you oh. mind holding one moment while I see if she's available? Yeah, not at all. Because they don't have anything better. To do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, we're right outside your office. <laughs> I can see you taking my call right now. All right, well, it sounds like we can get some answers. Yeah, yeah. Looks like she's on the other line. Would you like me to take a message? Would you look at that? Yeah, she's on the other line. Voicemail. I'll leave her voicemail. Okay, so yeah, so she never called back. No, she didn't. The office manager. We waited in the car for a little while. I think you called back one more time after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then it was like bordering on harassment at that point. It's a fine line, really. Yeah. Um, so instead, we just went out and we took some photos of us. In front of... Uh, oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, in front All of right. the... Uh, this is where the very steps that a pajama Nick Nolte... You'll recognize it out. there. That's where the very steps. There's Nick. Yeah. And then, we should have uh, worn our pajamas. I know. Yeah, we should have. <clears throat> and then there's me. Oh, you got I some height yeah. there. Yeah, yeah my stomach's kind of hanging out. But, <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, yeah, so that, uh, so we got to do that That's our least. update, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if we're ever going to find Melinda. I, I, I think our best bet is to try and find Nick Nolte. That's... And, the next step. I think that's our next avenue. And he's promoting, he's in that new Star Wars series coming out. Uh, whatever it's and called. And I think when we have Nick Nolte on, we just ask him questions about Melinda. Yeah, oh, nothing about his career yeah, or no. anything. Yeah. yeah. So what was Melinda like? Uh, <laughs> Who is Melinda? Yeah. Um, all right. Shall we? Yeah, I think so. That's yeah, it. Just everything. so you know, we're in Tucson this weekend, so we'll tell your uh, pals in Arizona, we're doing two nights there. Yeah. First night, greatest hits. Second night, the dirty stuff. Come both nights. Yep, we're doing the same show in Chicago, too, in January. What is that, January 25th or something? Like uh, yeah, I think I it's know. earlier than that, but okay. yeah, the 14th, 15th, something like that. Yeah, but we're in L.A., and we're all over the place. San, San Francisco. Francisco. Sketch Fest, and yeah. All right, well, let's welcome, um, uh, in a minute, Steve Young. We teased him at the beginning, um, a longtime writer uh, on uh, both Late Night and The Late Show with David Letterman, uh, responsible for Dave's record collection and Dave's video collection mm -hmm. segments, <clears throat> a writer for The Simpsons, and also a collector of, well, I'll let him explain, <laughs> but uh, he's, he's got a brand new documentary that uh, he is in called uh, Bathtubs Over Broadway. Please welcome Steve Young. Hey, we're here with Mark Borchard, director, filmmaker. Uh, there we are. Okay. <laughs> All right, Steve, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey. Hiya. Thanks Hello. for coming. Yes, thanks for coming on. Hello, Nick. Nick and Joe. Huh? Yes, that's right. That's right. Hey, first of all, thank you for giving us the complete David Letterman collection of VHS tapes. Like that was awfully generous of you. Well, it was uh, my pleasure and not a problem at all for me. I, I would rather have that sort of material go to where it was going to be appreciated rather than just thrown in a dumpster. Yeah. As you know, at the end of yeah. the show's life, a lot of stuff went into dumpsters. Yeah. So, but t talk about those those segments and how you came to sort of like spearhead those segments on on the Late Show. Dave's record collection preceded me by a number of years. Oh, okay. But uh, that had started in the early 80s. Dave Letterman himself and some of the writers at the time realized, you know, we all have weird record albums we've picked up over the years. Maybe we could make a comedy bit out of that. And so they got it going that way. By the time I got there in 1990, a lot of the, the early Glory Days stuff had been kind of already put through the system. William Shatner singing and all course, that sort of thing. That right. Was, that was... Uh, and that's like pre-internet days, too, yeah. right? I mean, like, this is pretty... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was the 80s into the 90s, and so I kept it going for most of the 90s, but it was getting harder, because all the, the... The the really good stuff was, like, the celebrities singing who shouldn't have been singing. <laughs> right. And once Jim you, Neighbors. Yeah, and of once course, you kind of yeah. run through that, then you're doing, uh, like, the learn how to take dictation and uh, right. learn how to knit by listening to a record album, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Very much in the same vein of what you guys have worked with, with the videos. And eventually, at some point in the mid-90s, I guess, somebody said, you know, I bet we could do a similar piece with all the VHS tapes that are floating around the, the, the world and uh, thrift shops and all that. And so we started doing Dave's video collection as a sort of cousin of record collection. And I 
curated that for a while, but a number of different writers o over the few years took care of that piece. But I certainly was in there. You guys, you guys did the uh, uh, Schwarzenegger, didn't you play Carnival in Rio? I think oh, you yeah, guys, I think you guys were the ones to break that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Rent a friend? Did you guys do yeah, Rent a friend? Yeah, I yeah. think that was the Chris Harris era, another yeah. uh, okay. a writer who uh, yeah. was in charge of video collection for a while. Yeah, so much good stuff, I remember. Yeah, yeah and so, yeah, days. when the show was closing up shop, I, you, you were kind enough to send me an email and say, hey, yeah, these are literally going to be put in a dumpster or something, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to them. So we hightailed it over there and grabbed as much as we could, and from the research department, too, and Tom Foster gave us a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, we have all those clips, like, stashed here in different places. We got the old uh, digi-beta tapes there mm -hmm. with some of the compilations. And uh, so, yeah, that's featured in Volume 8 of our show, but I wanted to show some more today. Um, and we also wanted to uh, talk about, oh, yeah, so what other stuff, uh, we know you wrote some Simpsons episodes, too. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? In the 90s, they had a couple episodes per season that were reserved for freelancers. And I did know some of the writers from The Simpsons, and they said, oh, yeah, this would be fun. Come out for a few days to L.A. and... We'll, we'll work up an episode. And when I got there, they already had kind of the premise. Yeah. It was Hurricane Nettie, I yeah. guess you were saying. Oh, it's one of the best that ever. One. That's one of my favorite lines, too. Oh, yeah. What was um, it? Uh, it was uh, either Rod or Todd Flanders. They were in the church, and they, they were wearing the lost and found mm -hmm. clothes. Yeah, yeah. And he said, look, Daddy, I'm a surfer. And he's wearing a butthole surfer <laughs> shirt. Yeah. That's right. And then the, I'm the stupid. Look. <laughs> Look, Rod's with me, and he's stupid. Look, and now mommy is stupid. <laughs> yeah, that uh, influence, those, those hand-me-down shirts, yeah. Yeah, those were, uh, oh. that was a lot of fun. I was out there for a couple days, just great writers all riffing and throwing out ideas and jokes. And Oh, man, so great, yeah. wow. Nice. I looked uh, up an outline, did a first draft. Yeah, so so talk, talk to us about when you discovered um, digging into Dave's record collection, like how you started finding I, what you call industrial musicals. Tell us a little bit about those. So uh, I would go around to the thrift shops and record stores in New York looking for the raw material, and I started picking up these souvenir record albums from corporate events like sales meetings and conventions. And I thought, well, that's going to be something funny uh, we can probably squeeze a joke out of it, even if it's just a boring speech or something. But they weren't speeches. You're thinking they were, of using it for the show. Oh, yeah. For, that's, yeah, yeah. I was not collecting anything right. like this myself. But I was stunned to realize that corporations had commissioned entire Broadway-style musicals, <laughs> often at an extremely high level of quality and <laughs> ambition, to be performed at their sales meetings. So it was just uh, an auditorium full of... Uh, B.F. Goodrich tire dealers <laughs> watching a musical about the triumphs and challenges of selling B.F. Goodrich tires. Were, were they like running out of things to buy? I mean, is that, what, is that what it boils down to? Like, or was it supposed to inspire? Or like, what were people's reactions in there? Do you know? Do you have, do you know any of these answers? Uh, if, <laughs> if you were a tire dealer or a tractor dealer or a Coca-Cola bottler and you saw a well-done show with great songs about your business and your life and why it matters what you do every day and how what you do is bettering America and mankind. If it was done right, people actually could wholeheartedly get behind it. And these companies had so much money to put into this. They were hiring A-level Broadway people to write it and perform in it. Wow. So, so it, it wasn't like a high school production done by some kids who didn't know what they were doing. This was at the best version of it, really thoroughly professional. Yeah, yeah let's hear one. Let's yeah, so I, <clears throat> I have a song, I think from that B.F. Goodrich oh, yeah. one, uh, queued up here. I, I brought a couple of the albums Oh, yeah, do you want to hold that up and I'll yeah. or grab Where the album? Oh, it. over by there, okay. so you're going to have to cross in front of the camera. Yeah, grab bro both albums and we'll hold that up, but I'll, right, I'll cue I'll this up. we got two songs from some of these industrial musicals oh, yeah. that we'll listen to, and then go ahead. All right, so let's hold up the, uh, we'll the tire one. Yep. This is a. He's got tires to sell. He's got tires to sell. Where'd you find this one? I don't remember it. Oh, they have the lyrics in the back. 5, 10, 50, 20 tires to sell. 20, 30, 40, 50 tires to sell. Everybody can sing along. 50, 60, 70, 80 tires to sell. 
He's got tires, tires to sell. <laughs> so that's wow. That's, that's tires. Yeah, that's the 1979 BF Goodrich a toe show, which was performed in Hawaii. Oh so my you, God! You'd so go to these resorts in these destinations that were like, oh my God, we're in Hawaii for a week and we're going to go to a bunch of meetings. But wow, there's a show and it. If it was, as I say, very much dependent on whether it was done right and any good or not, but they often were pretty darn good. And this one has the insanely beautiful premise that Satan has gotten it in his head that he wants to take over a B.F. Goodrich tire franchise. Oh, that's that one. <laughs> yes. And so <laughs> wow. the, the guy who runs the, uh, the, the, fi uh, the tire franchise has made a deal with the devil, <laughs> and now he's got to sell no way. way too many wow. tires to get out of having his soul stolen by How long Satan. is this thing? Like when, when they're sitting there watching this, is it like a 90-minute production, or is this an hour long? Uh, it varies. Uh, the bad thing uh, f from a drama viewpoint was – You'd get a, a great song and some characters going and a story going, and then quite often you'd pause for a dismal, long speech <laughs> by a company the vice CEO president. CEO, or yeah, yeah. Momentum crashing to a halt. <laughs> and but, then that's the end, or would they jump back into oh, the song? Oh, no, it was a, just like one of the GE uh, shows I have. It's a two record set for a conference and a show that lasted over the course of three days in 1966. Wow. So Three day yeah. show? <laughs> well, Whoa. with a lot of speeches and right. drinking and golfing probably, but <laughs> yeah. at, at the end of the B.F. Goodrich show, you'll be glad to know that through uh, his amazing pluck and dedication, our hero sells all the tires he needs to sell, and Whew. Satan is defeated. He is oh, not going to have good. a BF Goodrich tire. Yeah, I mean, you should have said spoiler to everybody I watching. Everybody's <laughs> That's gonna, right. If yeah. you if you somehow get a time machine and go back to 1979, get to the <laughs> Hawaii conference, now you know the ending. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I would have loved to have been there. I thought the company was going to go bank bankrupt. I thought they were done for. Oh, because Satan, how do you... How do you beat him? Yeah, I mean, it, theologically, it's a problematic <laughs> show. You do hear, though, I mean, like, I, I remember reading an article about how Walmart had, had a, like, a company sort of musical that they did recently. Starbucks did. And Starbucks did something yeah, for people. Yeah, we built the Starbucks on rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, they're more parodies, or they're doing covers, so they're not, like, original, you know, Broadway-style shows, but they're still trying to entertain their salespeople and their employees. We had one for uh, Yellow Pages, too, GTE. I think that was put out in the early 90s. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's a cassette oh. tape. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you gave me the, I think I, the dub of that. Yeah. You know, I was catalog, uh, cataloging my collection recently. Yeah, we'll show you the actual cassette tape. Because we always wondered, like, know we, we had so many that. theories, yeah. like, why would GTE make four songs and mm -hmm. put it on a cassette tape, and how did it end up at a thrift store? It was like, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, and my but dad was uh, like the head of uh, a sales team for a big um, anesthesia company, and he was in charge of planning the annual like uh, events. And they were always in places like Hawaii or Las you know, Vegas, Las or the Vegas. Or, 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 yeah, exactly. I've never had a job where you had to go to those things. I would, I would have loved to have. Oh, he that. had I, like I remember one time he hired mash impersonators, like a <laughs> perfect Jamie Farr. Couldn't the, you get the real Jamie? <laughs> yeah, at that point he should have. But yeah, they were all, it was like a mash okay. theme thing in Hawaii. And so they were all dressed <laughs> in scrubs and like doing, um, like they, he would tell them about the company and they would come and do mash stick, but doing, you know, talking about that oh, company. Boy. So what do we have here, Steve? Oh, this is, see, this is, that, is uh, uh, oh, this is bathrooms. Yeah, this which, is the legendary 1969 American Standard uh, bathroom fixture musical. Uh, plays a large part in the documentary bathrooms bathtubs over Broadway, but uh, I think we're going to hear a little bit of the anthem, My Bathroom. Yeah, so let me uh, rewind a little bit, and then here's My Bathroom from The Bathrooms Are Coming. Talking about the bathroom. And dream, Very much so. And dream, dream. 
it's oh. really good. I mean, yeah, like, it's it's way too good. When it's you aspirational. Think, it's she spends a lot of time in the bathroom. It sounds like <laughs> it's her private kind of place, as you learn in the song. I but, don't like that she uses cream as a verb, uh, but other than that, that's some, a, that's some a people do like that. I guess, it turns out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the woman who sang that song, I'm now uh, very good friends with. That's how wow. deep I've gotten into this. Much in the same ah, way that you, love it. you've tracked down some of your heroes yeah. from these videos. The documentary, a lot of it is about me taking that step out of just being a passive collector and saying who were these people and what else did they do. So I am uh, close friends with her, and uh, I won't tell you too many more spoilers from the movie, but... Uh, uh, if you like the bathrooms are coming from what you just yeah. heard from that clip, you are going to so find a lot. So you know her? To, yeah. Wow. And what's this one? We don't have a clip oh, from right. this. Uh, this. I is... just always love to bring Diesel Dazzle. <laughs> oh, sorry. Please be careful. <laughs> sorry, Steve. Diesel Dazzle. No, it's a one of a yeah. kind. Detroit Diesel Engine 1966. Uh, wow. A terrific show about selling and servicing diesel engines. Uh, the composer <laughs> wow. of that is a 92-year-old gentleman who I have now had the privilege and pleasure of collaborating with on a song that's in the movie. Whoa! <laughs> Holy I mean, that's, cow. that's next level. That that's is, next level. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that wow. is, Let me. I, uh, I, I think you're going. I think you took it too far. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Let me uh, hold now. up this because the movie uh, got distribution, so it's now playing in in some theaters now, right? This Various is... cities. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's called Bathtubs Over Broadway. Is that you in the? I, uh, that is me. I am, your I am the main glasses? subject of this film, I'm proud to say. Yeah, so uh, we have this beautiful ungainly poster, which I lug Let's around the city. Let's just set it here. Is this good? Yeah, this, this is perfect. This seems about That's right. That's <laughs> probably exactly what you want, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so this is playing, and it's go and it, then it, I assume it'll be on, um, like, available on digital. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be yeah, streaming everywhere. sometime in the yeah. new year. I don't know exactly when or where. Oh, before. I see uh, Martin Short. Yeah. David Letterman, Jell Biafra. Cheetah Rivera. Yeah, you Cheetah don't, Rivera. You don't see too many movies that have both Jello Biafra and Cheetah Rivera in them. <laughs> That's true. I'm proud Together to at last. Yes. It's yeah. about time. Yeah, but that kind of gives you the range of the record collectors and performers and people all connected through this who should not have ever met each other or yeah. known what yeah. each other was doing. Right. What I like is that there is a real heart to it in that, like, the. I mean, it's... I think I heard you talking about how there's tons of musicals about extraordinary people and extraordinary circumstances and a, and a magical Scottish village that appears every hundred years, but there's very rarely one about people who are selling bathroom fixtures. So it is very exciting and sort of like, I don't know, just to have that thing made for them is a pretty cool thing. And the fact that we were not supposed to ever know about this right. as civilians outside oh, really? of those industries. You could not see these shows or go into them if you were not a member of the sales force of these companies. Oh, wow. So there was no publicity, no tickets, and these records were never for sale. They were only given out to people who'd been at the show. Holy shit. Well, wow. the other thing Please that... Please don't curse. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention... Just to move on a little bit was that in addition to all of the stuff from Dave's video collection, you gave us a bunch of local commercials and we've been, we were always kind of obsessed with them, but there was a huge treasure trove we got from you. And, and what, where did those come from? We did a, a bit on the show in the nineties, a few times, just called local commercials. Oh, okay. And I think the plan was, uh, we sent an email out to every CBS affiliate saying, if you guys have weird, misbegotten local commercials that you've always been shaking your heads about in the newsroom or at the station there, why don't you send us a tape of whatever your favorites are because we want to do a comedy piece in the same way that video collection or record collection was right. found comedy, real stuff, like, oh, my God, those news bloopers from North Dakota. <laughs> I mean, so, you have to have an inside source. That's the only way you can yeah. get that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I always wonder, because I've, I've been obsessed with local commercials my whole life, mm -hmm. and I was like, how can I collect I these? So. And at one point, I actually considered right, driving around to hotels and staying in different cities and recording the local news channels. Wow, like, that is I, dedicated. I never did it. You thought I was going too far. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't do it. Okay. I did not do that. Well, here's one from Yakima, Washington. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben Dover from Computers Northwest. <laughs> if you feel that computers create more problems than they solve, like a Bob you really character. need us. 
At Washington Central Railroad, oh, we think of our relationship with Computers Northwest as a partnership. I gotta get that jacket. <laughs> as a growing company, our needs continuously change. Oh, wow. Computers Northwest planned our network for that growth and has always I mean, been there to it's help the It's the most popular the prank phone call name in the world, computer, isn't it? Is it no hey, well, he doesn't go by Benjamin. I recommend them. We offer solutions, not problems. Or my name isn't Ben Dover. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so yeah, you, you're home free as soon as he opens his mouth. That's and it. His name. So speaking yeah. of taking it too far, we actually tracked down. We tracked down Bend Over. Now that's we, the spirit. Yeah, this is exactly, exactly what yeah. all good collectors and enthusiasts need to do. You taking don't just it too accumulate. far. Right. You need to go out and and really solve these puzzles exactly. about who is this? Why did you do that? Yes, uh, and we found him, and we said. We'd love to fly out there. Where was he living? Like he's still in oh, Yakima. Yakima. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I think he owned an orchard. Yeah, there yeah. Too. He owned an orchard. And now. he and he was like you know, highly we, computerized orchard. Yeah. <laughs> we said we loved your local commercial. I was trying to dance around the fact that it was, uh, you know, that fact that his name's been over. I was like, we like your commercial. We like the the spirit of it. And you like my commercial. Yeah, Why? yeah. And then he, I don't he even said, remember making them. Yeah, he said it's also because my name's Bend Over, right? And I was like, yeah, uh, uh, you, yeah, you got, so, you got me, yeah. Bend so, Over. So I think we said we'd give him five hundred bucks, and then we bought our tickets. He, he said, yeah, sure, let's do it. And then <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we bought tickets to go to Seattle and then drive out. And there. then drive there, and then I think maybe two weeks later, he's like, I talked to my family about it, and they don't think I should do it. Oh. And, uh, uh, and we're like, I think, how I, can we tell them that we genuinely want to know what it's like growing up with guys. the name Bend Over, yeah. and that and we're not. It's not a mean-spirited thing. Yeah, I think then we offered him like nine hundred dollars. <laughs> we we, I mean, we dug deep, but it wasn't a yeah. It wasn't. I guess his family thought it was going to be exploitative, and that's a tough. I think we just have to show up at his door. Yeah, yeah. We do. Well, I found occasionally as I tracked down the writers and composers from these industrials, you'd reach a point when you made contact where they were suspicious. Yeah, right. Like, we get that How all the time. How did you know about this? You shouldn't know about this, first of all, because it was so not for the public. But then a guy from the Letterman show, oh, he's come here to like uh, make fun of us and make yeah. us look like uh, uh, jerks or losers. Yeah. Or right, and you right. have to get past that, and then they can relax. Oh, there's some actual genuine interest and respect here. How, yeah. how did you do it? Did you do phone calls, or did you do emails, or what was your, uh, how, did you, uh, how did you get in good with them? Like, how did they eventually warm up to you? Like, you had to really bother them, right? Yeah, well, if I could find, uh, I guess it was the dawn of the internet that I was really plunging into this. But if I called somebody with a fairly distinctive name, and I thought, all right, chances are this is the person. Yeah. And said, hi, you don't know me, but I'm a fan of your work. I have your uh, 1962 uh, Colgate Palmolive <laughs> show or whatever. <laughs> How did you have that? No, no one should know about that. <laughs> so you get that. And then, yeah. Well, I'm actually a collector, and I found it because, you know, this stuff turns up here and there. But very curious as to what this work was like to do and what it meant to you and what else did you do. Maybe I'll find some other records. Right. And then they kind of, oh, uh, I guess I could talk about that. Yeah, oh, I haven't thought about that in decades. Yeah. So it's a gradual easing it in. Yeah, easing Have they it in. all been receptive? Or have any of them, like, flat out said, I don't want to talk to you? Well, there may be that. There are occasionally people who just don't reply to an yeah. email yeah. or you leave a voicemail and they don't call you back. Some people say, oh, you know, it was fine. It was just a job. It was nothing special. I just did it for the money. But some people are quite philosophical about what this could mean to the audience and to post-war America trying to figure out what it was doing with the economy and the psychology of yeah. workers and employers and all that. Some people are actually quite thoughtful about it, like my friend and mentor, Mr. Hank Beebe, who wrote the music for Diesel Dazzle. Oh, man. <laughs> Those got to be worth something, right? I mean, if they're that rare, they got to be worth like... The, and Nick almost the broke it. The record I right just here. dropped? Yeah, yeah the, I uh, think it's Nick pretty just valuable. Destroyed. Right? Uh, it's very variable. There has not really developed a, a market for it yet, for the most part. Okay. Although the bathrooms are coming. If that one turns up, and, and that one is common enough that people know about it, and that actually is much more valuable on the market than some of the truly rare ones because no one but me knows Oh, right, them. yeah. You're, you're so d far down the wormhole yeah, yeah. that there's no other market for exactly. it. Exactly. Um, okay, speaking of capitalism and oh, yeah. music and singing, um, this is we played this video last week, and uh, we were going to play this up top, but we decided to play it while you were here because you, may, you, thought you, may, you might appreciate it. We have encountered, we haven't encountered yet, but we've 
been obsessed with this guy who can who's the master jingle writer mm. uh, 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 of local it, commercials. Of local commercials, right. we we came across a video for uh, in Wausau, Wisconsin, a dentist a dentistry a dentist office, and uh, it's just a toe tapper. It's so catchy. Then we found another one. We found out that he wrote that one too. And then we were down in Dallas last week, and we knew that's where he's from. We tried to track him down. He's elusive. We did a little research on him. He's the best in the game, but you can't talk to him. Okay. Like, and I he's multi-bazillionaire. Dallas, Dallas was a big hub for that. Oh, was it really? Yeah, I have some jingle records, and there were production oh. companies yeah. that worked out of Dallas, and there was a big talent pool of people who did this yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I heard that uh, uh, using the word jingle is a derogatory. Uh -oh. it's, a, it's an insult. What do you call I think it? It's, I think it's, well, hold on. According to an interview with this guy, what uh, was it called? Music, music driven advertising. Music driven, oh, yeah. driven yeah. advertising. Yeah. Yeah. It just rolls yeah. off the tongue. Yeah. Uh, all right, so this is a song that he wrote that we played last week, and uh, we wanted to show you. Um, it's for a chicken company. And you know there's something cooking, the aroma fills the air. This is real. Your friends and family just can't wait so to taste chicken what you prepare. <laughs> <laughs> the premise is she steals chicken. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's got it all. Plus, yeah. the lesson, if you're well-dressed and confident, you can go anywhere and <laughs> steal chicken. Take all the chicken you want. <laughs> they yeah. all seemed a little bit pissed, but like, it seemed yeah. like at first it was like, wait a second, you're yeah. not supposed to take Ruthie's the Ruthie's back in town. <laughs> oh, God. oh, she's wearing an evening gown. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so after we played that, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, um, a guy on Twitter did his rendition of it and was actually... I thought he kind of nailed it. Yeah, he did. And he so, did. Uh, I thought maybe we'd play his uh, rendition here. Or maybe your dad could hire that impersonator I'll, for the next convention. I'll ask him to, yeah. All right, this is Reese. Now there's something cooking. The aroma fills the air. <laughs> your friends and family just can't wait to taste what you've prepared. Raised to a higher standard. Is it memorized? Grows in quality. Chicken raised at Springer Mountain Farms <laughs> tastes better naturally. Raised to a higher <laughs> wow. standard. Springer Mountain Farms chicken raised to a higher standard. <laughs> Wow. And, and what I. <laughs> he is spent. He has to go. Oh, okay. yeah. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> Performance is on over. The floor right after that. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I timed it out. It's 30 seconds perfectly. Oh, really? The his, same his, running his, time his as the His meter was right too. on. Yeah. Some people have perfect pitch, some people can just. <laughs> Nail the length of a commercial. Yeah, wow. Reese, Reese nailed it. Yeah. yeah. And right. Reese, Reese, by the way, by his look, is exactly our demographic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> well, good job, Reese. Yeah, um, Reese. Good job. So, yeah. but now we've been getting, I, I figured we've been getting a lot of jingles in lately because we've been talking about jingles a lot mm -hmm. lately. So I, th I thought maybe we'd play a couple jingles for yeah, you. Yeah, well, this is a related field it's for similar, me. I have a right? small exactly. collection of them, but okay. it's, it's a great um, craft. This one, this one's more in the hip hop mode. This is, this is more Plus, contemporary. Yeah, somebody sent us this. W E T P E T S. W-E-T-P-E-T-S <laughs> and Pablo <laughs> Only one place where it's fish and lizards so Hang out with cats, cats and chinchillas Kick <laughs> back with hamsters and dogs Parakeets, rabbits and scorpions One stop, one shop, we got it all Any pet you can get and take home Best pet products and best pet food Best pet service is sweat pets for you W-E-T-P-E-T-S W-E-T-P-E-T-S Wet Pets and Pablo some editor Whoa. spent hours the, making the, those letters fly oh, okay. around. Should I keep going? I got another one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're doing two. In a oh, row. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got another one. Look, yeah, we'll just wrap. Or? We'll just wrap these up. No, this. I think it speaks for itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. W e t p e p s. Midwest Hemorrhoids Treatment Center. Don't suffer in silence from the discomfort and embarrassment from ongoing hemorrhoids. The Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center offers a fast, painless, non-surgical IRC treatment covered by most insurance. And most patients go back to the routine immediately. Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Don't suffer in silence. <laughs> now two locations on the campus of North Kansas City Hospital and in Leewood, Kansas. I can't wait to hear Reese's rendition of that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, this is going to be right in Reese's wheelhouse. But my <laughs> question about this, uh -huh. and I don't know if you guys have insight onto this yeah. after all the research you've done. It looks to me like somebody scooped up a lot of stock footage and then decided to 
cram these <laughs> unsuspecting people into a hemorrhoid. <laughs> That's what our thought was, too. Yeah. I know. Like, they're all gathered around, well, like, a, a picnic table. I, mm. I half expected Ruthie to come and steal some chicken <laughs> off of it at the end. I mean, it could have come from that same... Stock well, I, I wanted to see what the script was like. It was like, okay, and then we'll have a scene where they're feeding an uh, elderly woman some cake. Uh -huh. Yeah. They're like, oh. There's some old people running. Yep. Uh, I like the, the little kid, the toddler in the first shot runs along, and someday he's going to be talking about, yeah, well, I've had uh, small acting jobs. <laughs> oh, really? Like what? Would I have seen you in anything? I, well, uh, Midwest hemorrhoids. You know? Maybe a few other things. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I remember that jingle. Midwest hemorrhoid treatment A little center. taste of showbiz. Yeah. That's right. It was one made famous on Reese's compilation album. <laughs> yes, the Reese uh, compilation album with the associated video where you can see his... He had, it looked like he had one of those air conditioners that's like wheels in with the little tube that goes out. Reese did? Yeah, if you notice that in the back. Oh, I, I didn't notice yeah, that. Little, yeah. little My, I was looking at Reese and only Reese. I wasn't yeah. looking at the background at all. Well, Reese may be in line for some product placement money from the air conditioning I'd people. I think so. Yeah, yeah some, I'd pay uh, him for it. Some yeah. uh, musical advertisement product jingle. Well, what we are those called? Jingle. Oh yeah, no, not jingles. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. Uh, but we uh, are always soliciting more local commercials, so we want people to send in, if they have memorable jingles, people are continuing there's to send so these in. There's so many of them. There's so many jingles yeah. out there. And we and haven't even so delved good. into radio jingles. We're just like talking about local TV commercials. So um, the inspiration was a lot of those uh, ones that we grew up watching, but also the ones that, that uh, you turned over from... Uh, the Letterman collection. So thank uh, you for those. Let's watch some Letterman videos. You, okay. You, 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 you have some? This yeah. This be a walk right. down memory lane. All right. So yeah. these, these are just a few that uh, I think some of these were in the show partially, but very few of these have really seen the light of day with our show. Uh, and I'm showing, I think, different cuts than have been in. This oh, is one of the greatest titles of all time right here. Yeah. <laughs> How to Talk to the Elk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And this is a fascinating, you know, most of these videos, you know, you're kind of watching, you're like, okay, I think I can skim through a little bit here. I watched this whole thing, and it's like 80 minutes. It's pretty mesmerizing. Do you is remember it, this one? Uh, not sure, but I All have right. a question right off the bat. Okay, go for it. Is it elk plural or singular? I believe it is plural. Because okay, they're so talking this applies to, to all of them. All, oh, okay. all right. It's, it's not just noun. the, the oh, so one a, over there. Yes. It's a public speaking video, then. Uh, yeah, okay. it's not <laughs> like the elk as in the one right okay. in front of you. Are you nervous about getting up in front of elk? <laughs> right. Do you feel tongue-tied and maybe uh, you're not at your best? Well, there are ways to get through this. First, Here? you imagine the elk naked. Oh, it is an elk <laughs> naked. All right, get it. Well, this is a, a, you know, there's a lot of stuff of this guy, Gordon Eastman, uh, out in the uh, in the wild. Oh, of like, course we know Eastman. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know Eastman. We know guys work. track down Gordon? <laughs> Have not yet, but we, we will probably be in Wyoming, so we could find him. Um, and he oh, was, you're just... You just think it's funny because my name is Gordon Eastman, don't you? <laughs> well, we haven't even attempted this guy, but uh, maybe we will because uh, he's actually out in the wild for a lot of this. But what I like is when he goes back and he's talking to a buddy of his about how to do these elk calls. So <laughs> here's them elk calling to each other in uh, an office. I don't know. Yeah, that, well, that's surprisingly one of the habitats that the elk are <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Don Lobaugh. Don uh, lives in Gardner, Montana. He's a David Cross character. And he's developed a way to talk to Elf. <laughs> <laughs> they nod at each other. It's kind of the two men do when they're hanging out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what is there to say, really? <laughs> <laughs> also good. Okay. Now, <laughs> now. <laughs> That's good for a beginner. <laughs> when you do blow a lot, you'll have a tendency to gain moisture in your calls, so it's easy to clean out. The bull call and the cow call both. It's how to clean the calls out. Oh, that's a separate video. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no way an elk sounds like that. And now we wait. <laughs> <laughs> an elk walks to the door. You guys calling? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, you're just doing your video? Forget it. The elk's also wearing flannel. Yeah. <laughs> 80 minutes, you said. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of this. <laughs> it's, like, it's like experimental it. jazz, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, I applaud them for just 
continuing and continuing and continuing. Yeah, they just kept going. I just want a montage of them just looking at each other after the sound. Right, so right. we don't even need to see the sound. I just want to see them looking <laughs> just, at each other. Uh -huh. a, yeah. a super cut of all the polite nods. Yeah. And, yeah, okay. Well, and I've heard that adult men have trouble making you know, new friends, but I really think if you have a, something in common, you can just get together on a weekend and practice your elk calls. Yeah. I would uh, bond with that guy. <laughs> so loved this uh, one. Uh, I did not remember that one. I'm glad that I wasn't didn't. that wasn't memorable. No, well, <laughs> no. I, who knows if it even got on the air? I don't know. Here's one that was not in the montage we cut for our volume eight called Dave's Video Collection, but I thought it was worth showing. It's a celebrity video. <laughs> it's Ed Bagley Jr.'s Secrets of Enjoying Life. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's been figured out. Okay. Yeah. It's and 29 minutes long. So I was expecting, you know, Ed Bagley Jr. is kind of a likable weirdo and environmentalist and all this stuff. But um, uh, this is for kids, I think, mostly. And I wasn't, oh, okay. I wasn't expecting a raccoon to be involved. But what do you know? Um, and there's a, a raccoon to yeah, be involved? And there's a magical talking screen, too, that looks questionable, I think. Uh, so here's Ed Bagley Jr. in a... In a Adidas tracksuit, basically. How old do you think he is here? Like, 20 something? <laughs> Ed Begley Jr. Secrets of Enjoying Life. Get to the raccoon. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ed Begley Jr. And I'm here to share some secrets with you. <laughs> secrets are fun, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> sure they are. Hey, oh. Bruiser. There we go. There we go. I've learned now some we're talking. important things about exercise and rest. How about you? <laughs> if I could teach you to talk, you might have some interesting things to tell us, too probably get more respect than I'm getting around here. <laughs> I want you to know I do like you, Ed, and I'll try to be more That's understanding. That's the screen. Good thing you caught yourself. <laughs> Don't you talk that way about Bruiser or Zap, <laughs> your history. Perhaps then it's time for you to reflect on the secrets we've shared. That suits me just fine. I'm ready for my shower anyway. Maybe a quick dip in the pool. How about you, Bruiser? Open the pod bay doors. <laughs> Come on, buddy. That's it. I mean, that's all the clips I showed. Uh, but it, it looks like, it, I think that would kind of hurt. With Like, Bruiser's claws are kind of digging into him there for a good yeah. half of it. He's just kind of crawling all over Ed Bailey Yeah, Jr. you know there. he got off stage after they yelled, cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no. well, what did people know Ed Bagley Jr. Come for on, back buddy. then? What was his big Is thing? This when he was in, like, uh... Was it, not St. Elsewhere, but... Might have been. Uh, he was in some... I don't but know, did what kids was know him? Was he like on a Saturday morning cartoon or something? Yeah, it like... seems like a stretch. You know who the kids will really respond <laughs> yeah, <I know>. to? <laughs> this actor that their parents are vaguely aware of. I don't right. know what he would have been in at that time. I really don't. <laughs> Children age 5 to 11. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the airport movie, one of the airport movies? Oh, one of the airport movies? I feel like that was past his time. But, but still, I don't kids know. haven't seen that. Yeah, no, he, he did not cross over into children's entertainment, I don't think. What was the point of the raccoon? Or do we need raccoons <clears throat> to enjoy life? I think. Yeah, I think that was the that was the message uh -huh. there. That was the main takeaway of. We that. actually have a raccoon here, Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's bring Bruiser up. Oh, here. it's a special <laughs> night. It's the Phoebe Weeby show <laughs> and the raccoon. Yep. And uh, here's another in keeping things in the animal kingdom. Do you remember telepathic communication with animals? That one does ring a bell. Okay, yeah. Penelope Smith here. <laughs> this uh, woman, um, she she just strikes me when you see her. She strikes you as somebody who could telepathically communicate with animals. And so she interviews a lot of people who say that she can communicate with their horses, their iguanas, their guinea pigs. Um, sort of like, who's the, the dog whisperer guy before the dog whisperer? She's kind of a, she says she can channel them. What's the Caesar? Uh, Caesar Milano or something. Yeah. Does she yeah. mainly specialize in vertebrates? <clears throat> I think so, yeah. Okay. She doesn't uh, have any eels that she channels mm. or things like that. Slugs and so on. <clears throat> Mostly mammals. Okay. But, Raccoons? Uh, chickens Raccoons are... Yeah, chickens are involved. So let's uh, meet oh, Penelope Ruthie. Smith. <laughs> Sorry, <Ruthie. laughs> Yeah, this is before they were eaten. Uh, here's uh, how to Raised to a higher <laughs> standard. Uh, let me uh, rewind so you can yeah, see. Yeah, we don't want to miss a second yeah. of this. No. <laughs> I, already, I already like the titling. <laughs> One of the ways that Penelope helps people tune into animals is through a meditation that has them actually become an animal. Choose an animal or let an animal come to you and get inside the animal's viewpoint. Express emotions through your animal body. <laughs> like sadness, 
fear. <laughs> Boredom. Penelope has just introduced some new chickens to her flock and wants to find out how they are doing. Uh, she says she likes it here. It's very different and it's fun. <laughs> what he said was, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> and the other one, I'm here too. How, how does she do it? Experience other beings. I feel the more wise and loving being you become. <laughs> she said, like, "Get me out of here." So that's who videotaped and edited and produced it. <laughs> that's, get, that's actually the narrator. Yeah, right that's there. Roland. <laughs> yeah, they didn't know the, the animal's name and then it telepathically said, yeah. My name is Roland Jacopetti. <laughs> Narrated by me, Roland. She knew the cat wanted out that door. There's the right? production assistant. Uh, Rosanna, can you please go get another chicken? <laughs> wow, look at all those people. Yeah, I mean, I, we could probably I, cut it I off. Do but that's remember. the. I'll, do you remember that one? that one? Yeah. That, that looked familiar. Yeah. So I don't know what the, what of these were shown or not, but these were ones that caught our eye. Uh -huh. And I'm going to show one final one, I think, from that. And this is um, How to Play the Bones with Percy Danforth. Oh, Do you remember yeah. this one? Oh, yeah. We've got a lot of mileage out of that. Long after <laughs> video collection was done, just find any use to throw in a clip for that What one. was an example? Can you remember when this would be shown? Like, oh, did you watch the Grammy Awards last <laughs> night? Uh, Quite a quite a hot night. Yeah, they had some real big uh, live performances on the stage of the Grammys, and then we'd cut to <laughs> we'd cut to this. This is uh, Percy Danforth with uh, "Learn How to Play the." the I bones. don't think I've ever seen this cover. I've seen the video several yeah. times. Oh, those are bones on the cover. Mr. Bones, <laughs> uh, my old friend. <laughs> this is 2011. Well, they no put way. out a DVD of it, and that's oh, okay. I think that's what this is from. <laughs> Oh, it's like the Eddie Van Halen of Bones, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. More elaborate titling than we saw in the telepathic. You know, <laughs> after I've played the Bones, uh, very frequently uh, people come up to me and say, gee, that was swell. When in the, how in the world did you ever happen to invent it <laughs> like swell. this? Sometimes the playing no, of that's the a Bones true story. Is with very <laughs> it rapid happened once. music. And so you have to be able to hang on to the Bones. I've had Bones... Uh, I've had to pick bones out of ladies' laps in the audience. Of course, that's all right. But, uh, <laughs> oh, you sly Percy. dog. Oh, he's a dirty old man. This is how the video actually ends. That's all. That's it. <laughs> that's not my edit. That's actually how that video ended. How, we got to start ending our show that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. That's that's our, that's, like so that. we do hello, Mon, well, hello, hello Melinda, Melinda for... Our, for when we start the show, when we end the show, it has to be, that's all, that's it. <laughs> that's and then we all. end the show. Yeah. It's sort of this kind of a low-key uh, non-ending. Percy Danforth. Percy Danforth. We'll Danforth. a couple bones here, and then we'll end the show. Yeah. Oh, it, bones. oh it's not as easy as, as you think. Yeah. I mean, Percy makes it look easy. You're going to have to go easy. off to him and say, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that was swell. <laughs> uh, so t I tell people how they can see bathtubs over Broadway. Well, Bathtubs Over Broadway is in various cities and spreading out to more. Uh, we are in, right now, Seattle and Boston, and uh, we're moving into several other cities in the coming weeks. If you go to bathtubsoverbroadway.com, there's a tab you can click for screenings, and that'll give you an idea of the upcoming cities. And we will have news about the streaming sometime in the, the next month or two, but for now it's... It's on the theatrical run. I can't wait to see this. I, I know, I'm excited. I actually want, like, if it's playing near in Wisconsin or something over, or even maybe Chicago over the holidays, I feel like it'd be a good, like, family movie. Because, like, it's just, you know, it's a sort of a, I don't know, it's kind of a feel-good story, I feel like. so. It is I'm hilarious at the beginning, and then it deepens and broadens and becomes uh, surprisingly moving as uh, I go along my journey of at first just looking to s for something to laugh at on the right. Letterman show and then finding 
a lot more happens that really actually does change my life. And that's the way boy. that you guys know. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's why I can't wait to see yeah, it. Yeah, it's a very familiar journey to us as well. So you find you have this an weird unhealthy... artifact, you laugh <laughs> at it, and then you get unhealthily obsessed with it. Un yeah, yeah, an unhealthy obsession is what I'm a <clears throat> big fan of that. And nurse yourself back to health by continuing to pursue your obsession. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, we uh, are unhealthily obsessed with this. We thought we'd close out with... This final we're we're going to end with you. this one because it, you know it's it's December, <laughs> Christmas is coming, uh, the jingle it's Jingle Cat season. So we <laughs> played this last week though. So this this it got us into trouble, but we didn't do anything wrong. So we played this last week, and YouTube flagged it, and this French company said that's our video. We own Jingle Cats, and then I was like, no, you don't. I and, know the and guy it's who fair owned. use anyway, but yeah, they don't own it. Yeah. They don't own it. A guy named Mike Spall in Los Angeles, who I talk to very frequently, he <laughs> owns it. He's the creator of Jingle Babies and Jingle Dogs. <laughs> and and my, so it's a uh, franchise. My, so it's a franchise, yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so they, they shut us down. This French company shut us down. I sent them an email the other day. I was like, you are not Mike Spalla. You, you, are, you don't own Jingle Cats. Mm -hmm. They're like, we're very sorry. That's my French accent. Yeah, but, oh, that was yeah. eerie. Um, they, they went slinking away with their cat tail between their legs uh, and exactly. back up on YouTube. Uh, our, our so scheme to take over the world yes. by claiming ownership of Jingle Cat. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Think again. So we're, we're going to throw caution to the wind. We're going to play it again. We'll see if the algorithm picks up on it. Oh, I don't want to be associated it. with this. <laughs> there it is. Jingle, Jingle Cats. Steve, thanks for coming on. Thanks for yeah, coming my on. My pleasure. All right. Jingle Cats. Happy That's holidays. That's all. That's it.